Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, a couple weeks ago, I reached out to you, the viewers, and asked, what are your favorite apps or sites for cataloging your game collection? I got a ton of responses. So in this video, I'm gonna review the top three answers, compare the pros and cons of each, and help you decide which solution is right for you. Let's take a look. All right, so the first app we're gonna take a look at is called GameEye, and you guys overwhelmingly recommended this, and it's easy to see why, because it's a nice looking app, it's fairly full featured, and it's completely free. And it kind of surprised me when I launched it because it doesn't even require a username or login, it just allows you to start using the app. And I got right to work adding a bunch of games to this app. And so I jumped right into the plus right there and I went to the barcode feature. There's a couple things I wanna point out on the game import screen here. You see that they are showing you the value of that game, both loose, complete in box, and also new. Now it's getting that information from pricecharting.com. You can input how much you paid for it, and then right below that, you can indicate if it's a digital copy. So this will work both for physical collections as well as digital collections. And I think that's pretty cool because up to this point, I haven't really been cataloging some of my Steam games as well as my GOG.com games in my collection. So this is a way that I could do that. And then below that, you can indicate if you just have the game, the manual, the box, other, or new. And then below that, you can indicate sort of the quality or the condition of it, as well as put in some general notes about the game. And this import screen here is the same if you're just scanning one game or you're doing batch mode and a whole stack of them. And so as you can see, this is a pretty flexible way of importing a lot of games very quickly. I really like how it does allow you to set whether you just have a loose copy or maybe you know, just the disc and manual, or maybe it's new. And also again, if it's a digital copy. So it's a pretty flexible way of importing a bunch of games. After your games are imported, you can dig into them and add even more information. And one of the things I really like is that you can indicate whether you have beaten the game or how much of the game you've played or both. Because if you think about it, you technically could beat a game, but maybe you didn't get all of the achievements or do all the DLC. So again, it's very flexible in tracking all of that. And so I went to work importing a bunch of different games on a bunch of different systems into this app to see exactly how well it worked. And for the most part, if it was a popular title, it definitely found it. As a matter of fact, I was really surprised it found a bunch of old PC games, way more than actually I expected it to, which was a very nice surprise but occasionally it wouldn't find a game I was trying to import. Maybe it was a low print run, or maybe it was a little bit more obscure or really old PC game, or maybe it was a homebrew. Now currently GameI uses the gamesdb.net for the database, and that's not their own. And so what happens is if it doesn't find your game during import, it basically will ask you to go to that site and manually add it, which, that works, but it's not exactly an elegant solution because it takes you out of the app. However, if you do that, it will pop up in the app almost immediately. So it's a nice little workaround. And I should mention that the developer of this app has gone on record and saying that they intend to eventually create their own games database and start using that. So it'll be more flexible and tailored towards exactly what they need. Another thing that this app does that I really like is that you can add your hardware as well as your peripherals and you can do it pretty easily because if you go into those sections in the app, it has a bunch that it already knows about and you can just sit there and check off all of the ones you have. So that was pretty cool. That was a nice little surprise. Now it's pretty funny because they also have the ultra rare orange Halo Xbox that my buddy Emilio found. Now he no longer has it. He sold it to another local collector here, but yeah, there should only be one person who has that in their database. Now I mentioned that there's no account or login required to use this app. And this is where it gets into one of the cons and that is really backup. So when you use this app, your entire game collection exists on that specific device. So in my case, it's sitting on my iPhone. 
And that's not exactly optimal for me because sometimes I use an iPad and it was a little bit surprising to learn that there's no syncing over the internet. Uh, there's no syncing between devices or syncing between a website. So what currently happens is that the app will prompt you, I think once a week to say, hey, you need to back this up manually. And that's exactly what it does. So it brings up a screen and then gives you a bunch of options to back it up either to your computer or you can maybe message yourself or something like that. In my case, actually, I'm using a Mac, so I just use AirDrop. And it actually worked really easily since my phone was sitting next to it and it just showed up, the, the database file just showed up in my downloads directory. And this is another area where the developer has gone on record saying that they know they need to work on this because a lot of people would require something a little bit more elegant and seamless. And so supposedly he's working on a website that's coming that will then allow you to sync to that. So haven't seen it yet, but supposedly that's coming. Another thing I wasn't crazy about was that there was no obvious warning when I was accidentally adding a game that was a duplicate. And I get that sometimes you may have duplicates and you'll want them in there, but I expected to see some sort of warning come up. And instead, actually, you have to pay attention. There's this little blue D-pad cross there that's an indication whether it's already in your collection. That wasn't super obvious to me. I actually had to try to research that a little bit and that's what that means. But I wouldn't mind if it just prompted you. Some of the things to note about this app, down at the bottom there, you have an encyclopedia where you can basically look up stuff so if you're standing in a game store and you wanna just know more about a game, uh, you can use that right there to get a little bit more information about something that you may buy. Next to that is a report of basically how much your collection is currently worth. And then here's something I thought was pretty cool and that's upcoming. So you click on that and it shows you the games that are gonna be coming out very shortly. Now I'm not sure how complete this list is. I assume it's probably tied into, you know, the gamesdb.net but still that's a pretty cool feature and then finally under more you can take a look at your wish list as well as your trade and sell so all told actually i like game eye a lot there's a lot of great features here and again it's completely free which is kind of amazing the things i'd like to see them improve in the future number one being you need to be able to add your own custom game in here I just have a lot of homebrew and kind of weird games in my collection, so I ran into that an awful lot. And then there needs to be a better way of backing up and syncing your database. Moving on, we're gonna check out the second most popular app that you guys recommended. That is the CLZ Games app, which is part of the collectors.com site. And this site has been around and well-respected for a long time. I actually included it in my previous video, but there's been a lot of upgrades since. And these guys make a solution for a lot of collectors out there because while we're gonna take a look at the games app, they also make collector apps for movies, books, music, and comics, and each one of them is fully featured. However, all of that development and support comes at a price, and so each one of those has its own separate subscription. And so I had a stack of random games to test with, and just like the previous app, I noticed that this was very quick to scan. I like how it just automatically adds the game into a queue, so it does this bulk scanning automatically for you, whether you have one game or you have a stack of 10 of them. And the other thing I really like too is that in this one, it shows you a preview of the cover art, which is really nice because it gives you a little bit of a hint as if it actually found the right game. However, I noticed during import, it didn't ask me if I had a loose copy or a complete copy or a new copy. It just assumes you have a complete copy, which is probably true 90% of the time, but just be aware that's how it works. And then you can jump into each individual game and you can see the game card display here. It looks pretty nice. And then here's where you can edit the particular game and set whether it's loose or complete in box or new. Plus there's a lot of other options here that you can mess around with, including whether you completed it or not. And then check it out. It even has some fields here for say retail stores where you can say where in your store or I guess your game room, where that game is actually located, plus a bunch of other stuff too. And then if you happen to have a game that it doesn't recognize, well, it's really easy to manually add it. You just do it within the app. It's super simple. 
Of course, a lot of gamers want to know how much their collection is worth. So if you go into statistics, it'll show you how many games you have per system, some recent additions that you've added to the app. It also will show you your total value per system, as well as your top five most valuable games. And then it gets all this information from pricecharting.com. And I was surprised to see there is the ability to have multiple collections within the app. So trying to think what this might be used for, maybe if you live with somebody who's also a collector, this would be a way that you could have your collection and then your partner's collection or maybe your roommate's collection. Remember previously I mentioned that sometimes I'll use my iPhone and sometimes I'll use my iPad. And I love the fact that this app supports that. So it supports syncing between devices and it works flawlessly. And so you can see here using my iPad, you get a bunch more real estate, especially when you turn it on its side. So this is a really nice feature. I like it a lot. However, one thing I was kind of surprised to discover is that it's not really designed for hardware. Now you can manually add all your consoles to this and realistically, you know, how often would you do that, right? Every couple of years, but you can't really search on it and just quickly add them. So I'm not really sure how big of a deal that is, but just wanted to point it out. And also some people aren't gonna be crazy about paying for a subscription. Now the game's mobile app will cost you $15 a year, which is really just a little bit over a dollar a month, which in my mind, honestly, actually, I think that's pretty reasonable. I like when developers get paid because there's the incentive there to make sure it's well supported and you know well maintained new features along the way so i think that's pretty reasonable but you know your mileage may vary and you guys know that i collect vinyl records and so i checked out the music app which functioned very similar to the games app which was great because it's not a completely different experience if you use one you're going to be very familiar with the other and it found every album that I threw at it, which is great, but I gotta be honest with you guys, is that most vinyl collectors are probably already using the Discogs app, which is kind of the industry standard. But if you like this interface and you have a record collection and you wanna use something familiar, this is an option. And then the third option you guys recommended I check out is pricecharting.com. And I think this is a pretty interesting thing to look at because the previous two apps I talked about both use pricecharting.com in some way. So why not just check out the source? And I should mention that like GameEye, it's completely free. So if you're not familiar with gamecharting.com, it started as a site that would get pricing information from eBay as well as their own marketplace. And then gamers would go there and look up and sort of see trending and things like that. So it made sense for them to just roll in the ability to add your own game collection to it. However, unlike the other solutions, this isn't an app in the traditional sense. It's actually a website which has its plus and minuses. The plus is, well, it pretty much works everywhere. I mean, anything that has a browser can display the website and pretty much your collection. So that's pretty cool. You can have Windows, Mac, you can be running Linux, you can have a, you know, a new smartphone, an old smartphone, it doesn't really matter. However, as I started scanning in games, some of the limitations became very apparent. For instance, I'm using an iPhone running the latest version of iOS and Safari, and every time I went to use the barcode scanner, well, I would have to allow it to use my camera, which is great, and I would scan in my game, and I'd go back to add another one, and I'd have to do it all over again. I'd have to keep allowing the website to use my camera, which is very annoying. I mean, it was just, super time consuming. And the problem wasn't specific to Safari. So here I am trying to use Chrome on my iPhone and it's even worse. I can't allow it to use my camera at all. Now I've heard that Android works a lot better, but if you have an iPhone, just be aware. So for this review, I was really just left manually typing in the games that I wanted to add. And actually that works very well. And the other thing is that they have a pretty extensive library here of games that they track, which is very impressive. So in addition to finding all of the North American releases that you would expect, it's full of European and Japanese releases as well, which is really nice. And a neat tool that they include on their website is this video game lot value calculator. So this is pretty cool and completely free. So let's say that you see a lot of games for sale on say Craigslist or eBay or Facebook Marketplace and you're just wondering if it's a good deal. 
Well, you can manually type them in here and put the condition and whether they're complete or loose and it'll tell you. I actually had no idea this was here and I can definitely see me using this. Now, a couple things I don't like about price charting is that it's pretty weak with computer and big box games. You'll find some of the more common titles here. Uh, you'll find some Commodore 64 games, but then you won't really find much Atari ST or Amiga games. Um, I don't know if that's just because they're not scraping that from eBay or maybe there's just not a lot of sales sometimes, but it's mostly geared towards game consoles. And because of the nature of the site and what they track, it's really only physical games. They're not supporting digital games in your collection yet. So just be aware that, you know, if you wanna track your Steam games or your GOG games or whatever, you're not gonna be able to do that here. And so what I would say about price charting is that it's free and it's web-based and they're getting the latest price information possible. So in that regard, actually, it's pretty cool. But I would like to see them create a real app in the future. That way, if you have a large collection, you can use the barcode scanner, you know, do a bunch of imports. Because right now, if you had a large collection with, say, you know, a thousand games, I don't think you would want to hand import them. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to. All right, guys, well, let's a quick look at the top three game collecting solutions as chosen by you. But that list is not complete, not by a long shot. There's a bunch of different solutions out there. And I would love to know down in the comments what you recommend and what you are using. Let's have a discussion down there. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. <laughs>